Welcome to Euro PCR 2023. My name is Lars Sandergaard. I'm here with Francesco Maisano to discuss the Triluminate Pivotal trial. So Francesco, this randomized trial comparing triclip versus medical treatment is the first one we have seen and it was presented at ACC this year. So can you just tell us what it was the study design and what was the main finding of the study? So study design is uh relatively simple. It's a randomized trial between uh, uh, guideline-directed medical therapy and uh, triclip on top of guideline medical uh, uh, therapy uh, in patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation and symptoms. Saying that it looks simple, on the other hand, we know that there is no guidelines re really for these patients. But uh, it has been a very important trial because it's a, uh, it's a trial which is really entering this therapy into the Champions League of therapies. And uh, I think the, the initial outcomes are already very interesting. So, so tell us what was uh, the main finding of the study. So the main finding of the study, first of all, is, it was the, uh, a, a study uh, with a composite endpoint. Uh, including rehospitalization, uh, um, freedom from death, quality of life, and it was a this these outcomes were put in a hierarchical model, in a hierarchical model like in a, in a Finkelstein system, and uh, the trial at one year uh, resulted positive uh, overall, uh, mainly because of improvement of quality of life. So there was a significant improvement of life, but. We also saw that um, there wasn't any difference uh, between the two groups with according to heart failure, hospitalization, mortality or re or surgery for tricuspid regurgitation. Can you tell us what did that learn us about patients with tricuspid regurgitation? Well, I think uh, this is, is, is a matter of debate at the moment. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the other hand, uh, Lars, I think uh, this is probably the first uh, message from this trial. This trial is telling something which is, to me, very clear since already a few years we are working on tricuspid. These patients, they have a very poor quality of life to start with, but even if they have poor quality of life, they don't go to the hospital. So very few patients had a hospitalization prior to the enrollment, and very few after that, they needed the uh, rehospitalization. On the other hand, we also have important uh, uh, signals. F number one signal, the uh, device arm uh, showed that this procedure is very safe, very few adverse events at one year, and is very effective because you have a, a, a huge number of patients with a, a tremendous improvement in, uh, in, uh, in uh, tricuspid regurgitation, whereas the control arm, and this is very different from, for instance, quad trial, mm -hmm. at one year, they still have severe and more than severe uh, TR at, uh, uh, after one year of follow-up. Mm -hmm. So also with the, um, the quality of life improvement, there also seems to be an association how much you actually could reduce the uh, tricuspid regurgitation. Yeah, one of the uh, endpoints was an improvement on quality of life of more than 15 points. And actually, this has been achieved in the majority of patients with, uh, in, the, in the therapy arm. So this is already interesting. But what is even more interesting to me is that there is a linear correlation between the decrease of the degree of TR at uh, one year follow-up and the improvement of symptoms. Mm. This was one year outcome. Do you think that we'll learn more if you wait? Uh, will the benefit potentially be better if we wait two, three, maybe five years? Absolutely. I think uh, that this is an important uh, point. First of all, uh, this is a trial which has been uh, initiated in a very early stage of knowledge of this disease. Mm. And, but we also know that this uh, the tricuspid regurgitation is different from mitral regurgitation from aortic stenosis. Uh, this disease is much more long-standing. Uh, never forget the tricuspid valve is protecting the organs of the belly, I mean, the, the kidneys, the liver, the, the gut. 
and it takes more time to become a real problem. In our practice, what we see is that these patients may be managed for many years with medical therapy until, however, one day they come and they become unmanageable and very high risk. Mm -hmm. So this trial has been introduced in patients probably a bit earlier than in the later stages, which is very good. So we will know probably in two, three years whether uh, treating these patients with a mechanical approach on top of medical therapy uh, brings uh, some, uh, some advantage in terms of quality of life uh, and survival. You mentioned mitral regurgitation compared to tricuspid regurgitation. What, what would you see, what is the difference between those two patient groups? Yeah, I think there are big differences and uh, it's also a matter of debate at the moment. Uh, should we use uh, the standard concept of trials which have been developed for aortic stenosis, mitral regurgitation into the field of tricuspid regurgitation. Is heart failure standards the way to go for understanding uh, the, 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 the patient pathway for these patients? Mm -hmm. There are many differences. And there is another po important difference is that there is not one patient with tricuspid regurgitation. There are different pathways. There are patients with different uh, backgrounds, different uh, uh, clinical histories, and also different uh, phenotypes of uh, tricuspid regurgitation. So it is just the beginning, in my opinion, of a long journey where we will learn more, but for sure we will help many patients to stay better. So after seeing there is one year result for the trinuminate trial, has that changed your clinical practice or how you handle these patients? Well, to be very honest, uh, not yet. I think uh, this data will uh, support uh, for, uh, further my, or my decisions. In my practice, what I see that after these procedures, these patients are getting better. Mm. Uh, they are easier to be managed. And guess what? They, they come to me saying that they have many improvements. The number one improvement, everybody tells me, they can digest. Mm. And, you know, this is something that probably we, we underestimate the symptoms of, uh, of dyspepsia, which eventually brings to cachexia and, and end-stage disease. So... I think uh, we need more data because we need to have more support. I think one year data is not enough. Mm. And uh, this data shows uh, feasibility, safety, efficacy. Mm. We still need to see more data regarding clinical hard endpoints, but I'm pretty sure with time we will, we will have the answer. Yeah. So again, a trial which showed there was a significant improvement in quality of life for treating these patients here. Is there sufficient awareness in the community about this therapy for these patients? Are, are they coming forward or, or, or what, how should we handle this in the, in the near future? So as you know, Lars, uh, part of it, uh, we established a few years ago the PCR tricuspid focus group. And the main reason to establish this group in absence of evidence, in absence of enough clinical data, was really to gather around the table, different specialists to understand the disease. And it was a lot of work to start uh, having a common um, uh, way of uh, uh, thinking, a common way of communicating between uh, uh, surgeons, interventional cardiologists, imagers, heart failure specialists, electrophysiologists, and many other professionals who are seeing these patients in different situations. Don't forget, many of these patients are not going to the hospital, so maybe the GPs are involved in these patients. Mm. So awareness is the key element, particularly because the symptoms may be very misleading. As I mentioned before, one of the main improvements is that they can digest. Mm. Who cares about digestion? Till now, I was never caring about digestion as a cardiologist, cardiac surgeon. Now we have to think about the bowel as one of the target organs mm. of this disease. And I also think we can see a shift here at Europe PCR that there's more and more interest for the tricuspid uh, valve. There's a lot of sessions, a lot of attendees. So, so it seems that it's, it's working everything that now with the evidence. So it's going to be very interesting to follow this field uh, in the very near future. Absolutely. Francesco, thanks a lot for sharing your insight in this Triluminate pivotal trial. Thank you, Lars.